in the cold water tributaries of the Yakima Basin, a threatened species of fish hides in the shadows. Bull trout are native to the Pacific Northwest, where they evolved in the cold water streams right along other species of salmon and trout. Similar to other species of salmon and trout throughout the Pacific Northwest, the bull trout's numbers are in decline due to a variety of factors. This includes habitat loss or alteration, issues related to invasive species, historic overfishing, and impacts to their native prey base. Because bull trout are a predatory species, often feeding on juvenile salmon and steelhead, they were frequently removed from streams by anglers who wanted to improve struggling salmon and steelhead runs. In some regions, the bull trout had such a negative reputation that bounties were placed on their heads to remove them from the streams. Luckily, opinions about bull trout have changed. While once thought of as a nuisance predator, they are now seen as a vital component to a thriving freshwater ecosystem. Bull trout have stringent requirements for cold, clean water and complex habitat. This makes them an excellent indicator of water quality and also overall watershed health. And for this reason, we have changed our mindset from removal to recovery. In 1998, bull trout were listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. However, populations of bull trout in the Yakima Basin continue to decline. Of the remaining populations, many of them are isolated above reservoirs, and their small numbers put them at great risk for extirpation. Each fall, remaining bull trout populations in the Yakima Basin return to the headwater tributaries in which they are born. If they are lucky enough to find a mate, Bull trout will excavate a depression in the gravel where they will deposit and fertilize their eggs. In their gravel nests, the fertilized eggs will remain throughout the entire winter and much of the spring. Adult bull trout will head downstream to a large river, lake, or reservoir in search of an abundant food source. The high protein diet of juvenile fish will enable them to obtain enough energy to hopefully return the following fall to spawn. Now bull trout that emerge from their nest the following spring are barely more than 20 millimeters in length. They have limited swimming capabilities and are at a high risk for predation or being washed downstream. They are closely tied to slow water, shallow areas with an abundance of cover. Juvenile bull trout typically spend the next one to three years of their lives in their natal stream. When the timing is right, the juvenile bull trout can ride high spring flows up to a large river or reservoir where they remain until they become adults and return to the river to spawn. The one to three years that juvenile bull trout spend in their native streams are incredibly challenging. Besides the typical dangers facing very small fish, juvenile bull trout in the Yakima Basin have large issues with dewatering. Sometimes, in only a week, an entire mile of stream can go completely dry. In 2018, one of our bull trout streams in the upper Yakima Basin began going dry in early June. With no measurable precipitation during the summer months, the progression of dry stream bed began to move upstream. By the end of August, almost a mile of stream had deep water, and it would remain this way until late October. Dewatering in this bull trout stream has become a common occurrence. Historic logging practices in this stream has destabilized the stream bed. This has spread the water out as it flows through the stream, which makes the river more prone to dewatering. Add to that a shrinking snowpack due to climate change, and that creates some conditions that are really detrimental to bull trout. Throughout the summer, the dewatering extent rapidly expands upstream, and what remains are isolated pockets of water where some of the juvenile bull trout are lucky enough to find shelter. In these isolated pockets of water, juvenile bull trout try to withstand the drought. Rapidly shrinking pockets of water leave the bull trout vulnerable to potentially lethal water temperatures and increased rates of predation. If these small pools don't remain long enough, the bull trout will eventually be left high and dry on the rocks. 
the 2018 Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife led a group of volunteers, interns, local biologists, and technicians in an effort to help save some of these stranded fish. Interns and staff from the Columbia Fishery Enhancement Group's Bull Trout Task Force assisted biologists from WDFW, Kitas Conservation Trust, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Yakima Nation in this rescue effort. Bull trout are most active at night. Under the cover of darkness, juvenile bull trout leave their hiding places and are much easier to find. Armed with flashlights and dip nets, the group searches for stranded juveniles in isolated pockets of water. Once a bull trout is located, often rocks need to be removed so the fish isn't able to hide. Slow movements allow for the placement of small aquarium nets without startling the fish. Once captured, a quick measurement allows biologists to give an estimate of the age class of each fish. Once rescued, juvenile bull trout are placed in a bucket with other bull trout of the similar size. This continues until the night's work is done and the bull trout can be moved upstream to flowing water and released. Rescuing juvenile bull trout from almost certain death and relocating them to areas of perennial stream flow drastically improves their odds to survive to adulthood. In 2018, the rescue effort successfully captured and relocated 890 juvenile bull trout. It's the hope of local biologists that this rescue effort will help this struggling population of bull trout hold on. With climate change fueling the increased occurrence of drought in the Yakima Basin, rescue of juvenile bull trout will continue to occur until a long-term solution is found to address the dewatering issues in some of the Yakima Basin's bull trout streams. The survival of these bull trout is dependent on the continued recovery efforts in the Yakima Basin. And it's through this work that we hope that the apex predator of the Yakima River will return to the mouth of their native streams for generations to come. And here they will wait for the fall rains to rewater their streams and allow them to swim upstream to spawn once more. For more information on bull trout, bull trout task force, or other projects, visit our website at midcolumbiafisheries.org.